great resignation drive or uh, you know the kind of attrition challenges that the industry is facing is uh, is actually uh, i wouldn't say that it's been uh, a great surprise it was something which was coming because it was like a lull before the storm in 2020 when the pandemic hit and we hit an all time low in attrition we were all in single digits of uh, you know attrition in 2021 suddenly uh, everybody went into uh, you know a digital overdrive and uh, that's when we actually started seeing the attrition primarily because of uh, the other geographies also facing talent crunch people were not coming to coming on to work the kind of security or health challenges which the other geographies were facing and india happens to be the uh, the talent destination uh, person so we have been uh, uh, you know we uh, we actually took the decision we never went to hire from campuses in large numbers uh, earlier but in 2020 the last quarter of 2020 we went on to hire almost uh, close to 600 people uh, uh, you know in the last quarter of 2020 to make sure that we train and get them on board uh, in the second half of 2021 so we had an uh, you know a robust curriculum trainers both internally and externally so we actually did a quite a bit of an investment uh, at that particular point of time and that's something which is actually helping us at this particular point of time it's not that we have escaped the uh, uh, the the resignation drive or the attrition challenges uh, but we are trying to manage uh, you know with whatever we uh, what we were focusing was that we had defined what our areas of focus are going to be and we were looking at the talent from those particular domains and those particular technical areas only rather than trying and uh, you know splashing all over unlike the larger tech companies who are doing everything under the sun uh, we only focus on what uh, you know we have as our niche and what we have been able to prove to our customers and uh, that's helped us to some extent but it's still uh, i would say that you no know, if if there is something which is keeping me uh, awake in the night uh, it's primarily around how do i make sure that i fulfill for my customers because that's going to be the crucial element for us uh, going forward both in terms of sustenance and also uh, for repeat business from our customers as well if you had asked me this question probably you know 4 5 months back i would have probably given a more aggressive answer to say that now the future of workplace is going to be hybrid and everything is going to be new normal and other stuff but uh, after seeing the kind of impact uh, that we have seen after uh, all the lockdowns have opened up and uh, the positivity of seeing people uh, you know physically and interacting with people physically i would say uh, uh you know last year we were thinking of saying that probably 60% working remote and 40% working from office i would right now say that it's reversed to say that no probably be 60% working from office and 40% remote but one thing which we are very particular or very clear is uh, that flexibility is something which we want to give uh, you know to people who are running the project who are people who are managing the teams the the mandate or the the guideline that we are looking at is uh, at least meet twice a week if not more a uh, minimum of twice a week at least or if if it doesn't work out then maybe even at least uh, you know three or four days in a month kind of stuff so that flexibility is something which we will offer uh, to uh, that's that's the way i think things are going uh, uh, you know if i were to look at the future of workplace uh, particularly in india uh, you know the other locations might be very different because other countries might be very different particularly uh, the western countries might be very different but what you would see uh, towards east that is whether it's india or philippines or any of these kind of geographies the physical workplace also is part of the economy uh, and there is a, lo- a lot of uh, dependency uh, not just uh, from the tech industry per se but overall uh, you know the kind of ancillary uh, work or ancillary kind of employment that uh, you know the workplace actually drives we need to take into consideration all of those uh, so given that i would say that uh, it will not be work from anywhere it will certainly be work from somewhere uh, you know in that same geography and uh, it will be an hybrid model uh, that's the way uh, you know uh, i would uh, i would probably see it at least for the tech industry per se and it will also be driven by what some of the customers want as well because you have to look at the last uh, couple of years as much as the digital uh, uh you know off take has been 
there has also been equal number of uh, cyber crimes and uh, you know challenges on data and uh, the kind of integrity and uh, the vulnerability that uh, you know the data poses so uh, depending upon what the industry is and depending upon what the work is i'm sure that there will be at least a 50% of the customers who would insist on uh, you know some part of compartmentalization or ring fencing uh, kind of uh, stuff so uh, i would say that that's the way we are heading at this particular point of time and we had actually planned much earlier so we have given up some of our lease spaces uh, we don't intend to go back to those lease spaces at least at this particular point of time and we feel that uh, within our current capacity anywhere between 50 to 60% uh, on a given day would be actually operating from workspace workplace and the remaining 40 would be working remotely and that is something which will be uh, uh, like a rotation basis, it will not be the same set of guys who would always be working from home. But that flexibility is something which uh, we would we, uh, we are we have already devolved that into the uh, operating management level, and that's something which we want to make sure that we have a constant review and making sure that there is no bias or there is no uh, you know impact of uh, employee morale and uh, the employee satisfaction as well. Because for for any services company, employees are our biggest assets. If I were to look at uh, you know what it used to be, say in 2019, uh, it used to be uh, you know digital is something which we need to have or you know we should have, uh, and it's an extension of what you were doing uh, you know in the non-digital world, which you would try to extend it to the digital world as well. So it was never a digital first, uh, except for a few companies or a few industries, a few innovative. Uh, companies, 90% of the companies used to be basically whatever I have physically, I also want to extend that uh, in the digital world. Uh, but in the last two years, one thing that uh, the pandemic has actually taught us, which is probably the silver lining, is that it doesn't have to be the same. Uh, it can be very different. The amount of opportunity and the flexibility and uh, the kind of horizon that the digital world gives you is much, much bigger than what you could imagine uh, in a physical world. What you thought you can't do in a physical world is something which is uh, you know uh, which, which is a much easier uh, thing to do in the digital world nowadays so uh, the digital first is truly digital first now because everybody is thinking first digital and then how do i replicate that if i were to offer the same service in any other mode and many of the services are only digital as well so uh, you know uh, the amount of uh, swiggy orders or the amount of zomato orders that you would actually see uh, nowadays or uh, you know, you could have seen the number of UPI transactions that in, the India has uh, seen, and we are at least 50% ahead of the, uh, you know, larger economy than ours, which is China. Uh, that shows, uh, you know, how it is going to be, uh, uh, how the digital world is reimagining itself. And uh, that's going to be the trend as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, nobody wants to be left behind and everybody is trying to uh, grab the opportunity and catch up uh, and some some wants to actually move ahead as well. So so that that that's going to be the the norm uh, going forward. This is something which I'm sure uh, you know. I've been part of I'm part of the NASCOM Regional Committee uh, forum as well, and we have been talking about it among our peers uh, from the tech industry uh, with the kind of costs that we are seeing. Uh, you know, with whatever we say as attrition and. Uh, the impending, uh, you know, based on the war and based on what the rate increases that you see in the US and the kind of rate increase that we have seen now because of inflationary challenges. We are not sure as to where that cost is going to settle down, but that is certainly making us, uh, you know, less competitive. I wouldn't say not uncompetitive, but it's making us less competitive from a price perspective. As much as we say that, no, we are not just a low cost destination, but cost is also a factor. Uh, it's not, uh, of course, we have the scale, we have the talent, but cost is also certainly a factor as well. Uh, so uh, given that, I think we really have to uh, reimagine how we are going to skill our team, how we are going to actually go one step above being just order takers, uh, uh, you know, per se, because the services industry per se has been primarily around, you know, doing what the customer is asking us to do. There are some part of the product companies who are, uh, you know, inventing, imagining uh, new things. But now the services company also, at least I've seen it and even in our own company as to how we are 
thinking about what the customer would want one year down the line, two years down the line, the amount of investment that we are trying to do on an R&D space, even though it is not our product uh, per se, uh, that's what is going to be the norm. And that's the only thing which will probably keep us uh, you know, ahead in the race. Uh, this cost challenge is not only India specific, it is actually happening uh, in multiple other geographies as well. Uh, but it has to find some equilibrium somewhere. And I think that hopefully in the next three to six months kind of a time frame, we'll find that equilibrium. And the only thing which will actually keep us ahead uh, in the tech race and being called as uh, the tech up of the world uh, is going to be primarily around how we are investing and nurturing the talent for the future and the technology for the future.